we're going to start getting into the calculus by talking about limits. And when you think of a limit, I mean, maybe you have something you can visualize. I mean, I can only eat so much food before I'm full. Maybe my limit is five hamburgers in one sitting, but let's think about it mathematically and graphically. I've put a lot of words on this slide, but they're important words, so I wanted to uh, make sure I had them, so I remembered to say them, and you have a chance to read them. So what's a limit? It's what a function should be at a certain point. So traditionally, we would say we assign a value to x. Let's say x is a, and a could be any number. We're going to make x a. And the idea is, as you get closer and closer and closer to that a value, from either the left side or the right side, your function is getting closer and closer and closer to that dotted line, which we're calling L, the limit. It's what you expect f of a to be. Now, sometimes f of a is the same as your limit, like this one won't be because it's got a hole, but if this was just nice and continuous, then yeah, your limit is going to be the same as the value of the function at a. But sometimes you get these discontinuities. Maybe this has a removable discontinuity, like a point, and f of a is actually over here. Let's put that the right notation. So in this case, uh, f of a is completely different than what you expect from the limit. I've written down two functions on the top, g of x, and h of x. So it doesn't matter if it's f of x or g of x, they're still functions. Our general notation for a limit, and how we say this is the limit as x approaches a of a function f of x can be assigned l. And we can solve for that limit. So if we wanted to take g of x and put it into that kind of notation, and notice I've said a is going to be 2, so the limit as x approaches 2 of, and I'm just going to put in the actual value or the equation of the function. And we can figure that out, but for now, we'll just leave it as L. And same for h of x. x is approaching 2 still. This is the equation of the function. So we have lots and lots of notation in calculus, so try and memorize some of them. This slide is representing just what we drew there, the limit as x approaches 2 of these various functions. I'm going to write g of x first. And what we're doing here is we're choosing values to pick to see what the behavior of this function is as I get close to 2. Now I could have picked minus 2 you know, minus one, zero, but you want to see it really, really close to the, to what the limit will be, or the, what you want A will be, sorry. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I would just have to do the math. For my first guy here, I do two times 1.9 plus three, and that would give me about 6.8. So the value of this function, when x is equal to 1.9, it's 6.8. Let's get closer to a. Let's get closer to, to 2. 1.99 is closer. If I do that math again, g of x, I think I said f of x, I meant g of x, is going to have a value of 6.98. If I get super close, g of x has a value of 6.998. Now, the beauty of this function is it's continuous at 2. So I can put 2 into the equation and I'm going to get 7. But let's see what was happening on the other side. I mean, I guess I should really start from here and get closer. Whatever. <laughs> Put 2.1 into that equation. I get 7.2. I get closer to 2 from the right side. 2.01. 7.02. And I would get super close to 2. 2.001. You can see I'm getting closer and closer to the value 7 for g of x as x approaches 2. And we can do the same thing with our rational expression h of x. So we can just sub in values that are close to 2 coming in from either direction. So my first one, 1.9, the math I will do is a little more involved. 
1.9 squared minus 4 divided by 1.9 minus 2. And when I put that into my calculator, I get 3.9. If I bring the x closer to a, I get 3.99 when I use 1.99. And as you can probably guess, if I use 1.999, I get 3.9. 999. Nine, nine. And if I wanted to test it at x equals 2, because of this issue, I get undefined. So by inserting 2 into the equation, I can't know what the limit is because the function is not defined at x equals 2. So this table is letting me see what the function is approaching at least. Going from the right side, if I started at 2.1 and put it into the equation, I would get 4.1, getting closer and getting closer. So it's tedious, but it's a foolproof way to see what's going on. And here's a graph of these two functions. Okay, the one in red is g of x, which remember was 2x. I'll just write it down, 2x plus 3. And the one in green is h of x, which equals x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. And why is a graph of h of x a straight line? Once again, it's at simplifying the rational expression. If I factor the top, I get a factor that cancels, which means it's a whole, not an asymptote. And we see that whole right here. Okay, so this is my a value, 2, what we're approaching. Uh, we can see how these functions are behaving. So as g of x comes into 2 from the left side, it's getting closer and closer to 4. And it's in fact, it's defined at 4. That function exists. Uh, the function is defined at 2. It has a value of 4 at 2. And the same for the other side. And h of x as we come into a is getting closer and closer to 4. Sorry, I said 4 for g of x. I meant 7. But it's never going to actually be that because it is undefined there. If you wanted to see that graph with the points moving, this link will take you to a Desmos picture of it. And just to really, really try and drive home the fact that the limit is not necessarily always equal to the value of the function at a. So in our first picture here, we see that at a, the limit is what we expect the function to be as we come to a in either direction. But in this case, we have one of those point discontinuities, and f of a is actually up here. Our second picture is a little more complicated. We'll get into what happens with these piecewise functions with jump discontinuities for sure. So the limit as you approach a from the left side from the negative uh, appears to be this. But if you come from the other side, which you have to be able to come from both sides, it doesn't approach the same value, same y value. So something going on there. These discontinuities uh, in our graph create a situation where the limit might not exist. Uh, the rule is, in order for a limit to exist, you have to approach the same y value from either direction. And how we can write that is to say that as x approaches a, whatever our, y, our x value is, from the left, we put a little negative sign to indicate we're coming in from the left, has to equal the limit as x approaches a from the positive side. So a from the negative, a from the positive. So coming in from the right hand side. If this is true, if you satisfy this, then the limit exists. So if I look at the parabola, let's say we're approaching zero from the negative side, we're approaching x equals zero. Y is also approaching zero from the negative side coming from the left. Coming from the right, as you approach x equals zero, y is also approaching zero as well. So they're both approaching the same value from either direction, the limit exists. Where the limit doesn't exist, you can find one-side limits, and sometimes you'll be asked to do that. What's the one-sided limit? 
if you find two of them, you can compare and they're not the same. You can determine whether the limit of the function at that point exists. So looking at the red line, as we come in, and I'll write it up here, the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left side, so I put that little negative in the air above it, appears to be 2. And the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the positive side, now we're on the parabola, right? As we approach negative 1 from the positive side, we're approaching 4. So this limit does not exist because 2 is not equal to 4. What's the other place on this graph where you can see the limit does not exist? Right, at x equals 1, from the right we are approaching f of x equals 0.5, and from the left we are approaching f of x equals 4. We also need to think about what's happening when we have vertical asymptotes. So let's look at our first graph right here, and let's talk about what's happening as we get closer and closer to zero from the negative side and from the positive side. So getting used to this notation. All right, as I come in from the negative side, the graph is going and it's going down, 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 down. down. What's it approaching? Negative infinity. As I come in from the positive side, the graph going sharply up and approaching positive infinity. So that's what happens when you get close to these asymptotes, you usually are approaching negative or positive infinity. So the limit doesn't exist here. In this situation, sometimes people do say it exists, sometimes it doesn't. Depends on your definition of a limit. But when I look at this, I'd be okay with it. The limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side, from the left, is equal to infinity. And the limit as x approaches 2 from the positive side, the function is approaching infinity as well. So I would say limit exists. I'm good with that. If a function is continuous at a point x equals a, so it's kind of a wrap up here, does the limit exist. Well, if the function is continuous, that means you can approach a point from either side and that point is part of the graph. So yes, the limit will exist in that situation. Going the other way, if the limit exists for a function as x approaches a, is the function continuous? So let's do a few a values. Let's start with a equals negative 2. So the limit definitely exists because as we come from the left and the right, f of x is approaching negative 1. Limit is good, but we see there's a hole there, this point discontinuity. So no, the function is not continuous there. If I look at a equals 0, well, the limit doesn't exist because as we approach from the left, we're approaching 0, I believe. And as we approach from the right, we're approaching 2. The one-sided limits are not equal to each other, so the limit does not exist at a equals 0. And then over here, so that's a jump discontinuity, so I'm just throwing some more terminology. And what's happening at a equals 4? Looks like we has an, have an asymptote for part of that, the, uh, the right-hand side. So as we come in from the left, it looks like f of x is approaching or <laughs> stays at 2.5. But as we come in from the right, f of x is approach, approaching infinity. So the limit does not exist there, nor is a function continuous there. And we call this an infinite discontinuity. 
Our last graph was a piecewise function, and so is this, but we don't have the picture. It's really nice to be able to fig figure things out without having to draw the picture. All right, so let's see what we could do here. I've got three equations that are describing the shape of this graph. I mean, I can quickly look and be like, okay, these are all pretty straightforward equations. I've got one parabola and two straight lines. I know it's going to be continuous along all that. So I'm not really interested in points like x equals minus two or <laughs> x equals three, unless I was told to be interested for a certain reason, because I know it's going to be continuous and the limit will exist. And it'll just be the value of the function for that value part of x. But let's look at when x is equal to one, when a is equal to one. So what do I want to know? I want to come at it both ways. So if I come at x is 1 from the left side, the equation that describes f of x over that interval is x squared minus 2. And if I come at x from the right side, x equals 1 from the right side, the equation that describes f of x over that interval is 3x minus 4. So really, I just kind of want to see what happens when I plug 1 into both of these equations. Because that's what I'm, my a value is, that's what I'm approaching. 1 squared minus 2 equals negative 1. 3 times 1 minus 4 equals negative 1. These two numbers are the same. So the limit exists, and it is negative 1 as x approaches 1 from either direction. How about what's happening at x equals 4? As we approach 4 from the left or negative side, the equation that describes the function at that interval over that interval is 3x minus 4. And the equation that describes f of x as we come in from the positive side is negative 2x plus 5. So let's plug 4 into both these equations, see what's happening. 3 times 4 minus 4 is 12 minus 4 equals 8. So we are approaching 8 as we x approaches 4 from the left side. Let's do the same thing as x approaches 4 from the right side. Negative 8 plus 5 equals negative 3. So the one-sided limits are not equal to each other at x equals 4, so the limit does not exist at x equals 4. And DNE just means does not exist. All right, so that's kind of the learning about limits part, and then we'll get into how to evaluate limits mathematically next time.